the future of entrepreneurship. This is pretty exciting. Where is everybody like uh, used to write in 2015 now and all that kind of stuff? Not yet. Me either. I, I'm still like I'm still having Christmas. I don't know what's going on, but we'll get it. We'll get it all worked out. Somebody just told me. He said it's it's here and it's still coming, so you may as well get used to it. So I guess he's right. Hey, this morning our first presenter is Sarah Brown, the lovely and talented Sarah Pierce Brown. Yes. From, I always have, this is so funny, I know her and I always have to read the things so I get the words right. Small Business Development Center. And that's, that's not what she is, that's where she's from. And she's going to talk to us about some exciting things they have going on and what they can help us with. So without further ado, Sarah Brown. public speaking well. I do one-on-one -on -one really well because <laughs> I can talk to a wall. Um, like she said, I'm from the Kentucky Small Business Development Center. We are, we, we have very, we have offices out of UK, U of L, Lexington, Somerset. I'm based out of the Murray State office. Um, I have people that I work with that we are all centered around Murray State, but we are based in Henderson, Owensboro, and Murray, Princeton, and Paducah. Um, and what we are there for, we are basically there for to get you ready, to get the ideal candidate ready to go to the bank. Um, that's where we start our relationship. When we, we can help you with your business plan, our marketing ideas, on different things like that. I can spread numbers, I can help you do projection numbers. Because um, that's very overwhelming for lots of people that have never started their own business or done anything like that. So we've all had lots of intense training on how to do those. Um, but that's not where we just stop. We don't just go, okay, here's your business plan. You go to the bank and have a nice life. We want to continue to our relationship to grow. Um, as you are in business, if you see that things aren't going exactly the way they should be going, we can also look at your numbers to say, okay, well, you're out of line, you know, in the industry, you're spending way too much on salaries or um, <coughs> different other um, liabilities that you also have. So, and as that relationship grows, we can also, you know, we do different things during the time. We can help you with social media, which is a huge thing in our society today. Um, and as we go, as that relationship grows, we always just want to be a part. If something's not right, let us know before it's too late, because that's usually what happens is people, they know that something's going wrong, but they're not exactly sure what it is. <coughs> so, you know, they just continue to do the wrong thing and then it's too late. And that a lot of small businesses fail within the first two or three years just because of that. Because they're not educated enough on what's going on with their own business. As the time comes to an end when you are ready to either sell your business or close your business or God forbid you have to file bankruptcy and just shut it down that way. We are also there to help you through that time because we can evaluate your business, tell you what it's actually worth. Because lots of people think what they think their business is worth and what it is worth is two totally different numbers. You've taken out years of depreciation, you've taken out your car insurance, and you've taken out your car payment, you know. There's different things that you can add back in to add to your to add to the value of your business, or you can, you know, subtract things out. So we're also there to help you do that. Um, we've been, uh, like I said, we have offices in um, Owensboro, and the we have two people there: Lo Stecker and Trisha Hudson, and they've been there for about 17 years. So they've got this down to a science. Um, I've been with um, the SEDC since last summer, and I learn something new every day. It's amazing the different, and I've been in business for years um, myself. So I have that background, the stuff that I still had no idea anything about. 
and it's helped me in my business and just doing it every day. So, I don't think I'm able to do this, but. Yes. Right. Do you do, uh, so would you work, I, I guess you kind of already answered this, but would you work with existing uh, companies if they were doing a new venture? Like, yes. That, yeah. Like right now, I have a business that has been established for several years, but they're trying to do a whole different spinoff of it, but still keep it in the same business. Mm -hmm. So I can help them to kind of evaluate how much it's going to cost and what kind of revenue it will bring in to see if it is um, to see if it's financially, you know, sound for them to do it. Yeah. How do you charge? I'm a free service. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm funded through the SBA and through our state, and so I'm for, all my services are free. <coughs> yes. Could you go over what the market research data you can provide um, when they're doing the business plans? Yes, during the business plan, I always pull market research that is specific to either. I try to get it down to Kentucky, but if I can't get it to Kentucky, we can always do the southern part of the United States, and it has great research. Uh, it's called Profit Sense, and it has everything <coughs> broken down to you should spend 1% on advertising and 64% on salaries. It's very useful information when you are doing your business plan because it can keep you in line so you're not way out of balance on different things. These percentages, of course I've heard these one, like advertising, one to two percent, sometimes three percent. But these percentages, are they not going to be different for different businesses? They are, and it is industry specific. Oh, okay. Okay. Because restaurant, for instance, you end up knowing that, but yet when you go to retail like Walmart, exactly. that's totally different. Mm -hmm. We use different codes, and it's called an ACS code. Yes, I see code. Yes, and um, it's differentiated between those codes. Yes. What would you say is your, um, today, your favorite or uh, the kind of client you like to work with? Like you get excited, oh my gosh, this is going to be so much fun. Um, I had a, it's, and it's not in the immediate area, but it's a new coffee shop. And it, it's not just a coffee shop, but she has expanded her services to some clothes and different knickknacks and stuff. But they're just, and, and it may just be the people because they're really fun people and I just really like them. But yeah, it's a great, I can't wait. It should be opening in about two months. And uh, but the process that we have gone through, I've got to look at all the different stuff she's carrying. <laughs> so that's fun for me. <laughs> and they're very easy to work with. Yes. Walk me through a new person is looking at an idea. We've got a plan, and we accidentally found out about you. Hopefully, someone's referred you, or you found out about you <clears> in a normal <throat> manner. But I find out about you. I'm like, oh my God, what can you do? How? What? Where do we start? Walk me through that process. And um, what I do is, and like I said, basically for that very first startup person, we're gonna look, we're gonna pull the industry data to see if the business is even, you know, in the other businesses in the industry, how successful they've been in the last couple of years, because it breaks it down from the last five years to the last three years to the last twelve months. So you have to look at that first. Okay, how risky is that? Um, and then, you know, just where have you started? What research have you done on your own? Because lots of people think, I want to do this, but they have no idea where to even start. Um, and they have not pulled any information. So we're gonna, I'm going to sit them down, and as we go through the business plan, they'll be able to pull the information, and I work with them, so it's not just me giving them the information to put in the business plan. So after that, you know, we, uh, we sit down and we just talk about what all they've done. Because lots of people, there's little things that they don't think about. Like yesterday I had one and I said, well, what about insurance? What, have you talked to an insurance agent? He was like, why would I need insurance? I'm like, oh, you know, because you things that you think would be common sense to people, a lot of times they're really not. 
Um, and I was like, oh, you don't have any. And he had already been in business and doing construction. So I was like, oh, heavens. I was like, there's lots of that. I was like, here's such a huge liability. I was like, you live here and you go do that right now. And uh, he was like, well, if something happens, won't their homeowners cover it? And I was like, not if you're not insured, I don't think. But maybe he had some of that just in time insurance, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But I, you know, I was just quick. shocked. I was like, oh my God. So, But yeah, and people forget the little things like business licenses and talking with your CPA about how you want your business set up. Um, because there's so many different aspects of the C Corp or the S Corp or an LLC or just <coughs> so we try to go through all that and uh, just talk about all the little things that they need to do. Yes. You have an existing business and want to expand into a different community or city or do you do the market research for them? I okay. can. And is it site specific to the location that they're wanting to move into? Yes. And what kind of data do they receive? Um, they will receive uh, a traffic count for the area, <coughs> demographics <coughs> for that area, um, and I've not specifically done one myself, but. A little more. <laughs> <laughs> but we can do that. What is it? Oh, sorry. What's the timeline generally from the start to the If you're an ideal candidate, say you have the equity or cash to put down, the um, credit score is good because there's lots of people that forget about your credit score. I mean, they're like, oh, I haven't checked in a while. So that's a huge thing because I get lots of people that they still think that they can get money even if they can't. So, um, but timeline-wise, if you're an ideal candidate, you have everything in place, you're looking at about six weeks. What's traffic count? What is that? Traffic count? Yeah, what's that mean? Um, it's specific to an area, how many times a day people are going to drive by your establishment. Oh, okay. County traffic. County traffic. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> do more people come to you with just like an idea of what they want to do, or are they like, pretty much set up and ready to go and just making sure that they haven't left anything out. Mostly people that already have ideas. I've had a few that come in and they're like, I want to open a business, but I don't know what I want to do. What, what do you do with them? Uh, I told them to go do some more research. Go research. <laughs> <laughs> I really try to make things easier for the bankers. That's who I really, you know, that's what I'm really there for, to make things an easy transition for the client and for the bankers. Because if the bank, if you go to the bank and you're just bouncing off the walls and you have no clue what you're doing, hopefully you send them to me. <laughs> That's what I really would like you to do. And so I can at least, you know, get everything straight. So you provide them a, a professional guideline, yes. a box basically they can give to their banker and give to the person that might be an investment opportunity for them and say, this is what we're doing, this is how we're going to implement, this is what our product line is, this is what our potential revenue is, and these are our goals over the next three to five years. Exactly. For our new business. And, and it, I call it because I'm an existing business and I was having growing pains. And for me, it was kind of like, what else, what am I missing? What am I not doing? Because you're so, you're so reactive versus proactive as a business owner when you're doing your business every day and you become overwhelmed whenever you're doing it at, 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 a, at a level that exceeds what your expectations have been at that point in time. And so it helped to have someone come in and, and look at it with a fresh eye and say, well, have you thought about this? And let's talk about a business plan, business plan. So I, I mean, I think that's a very valuable service to have. How many people are you working with currently and what type of scope of businesses are you? Give us a couple of examples of different types of businesses by, by genre. I have, right now currently, I have 12 active clients, um, and they are, I have a high-end shoe store. <laughs> um, I have um, a craft distillery. Um, I have um, an expansion of a scuba store. <laughs> Oof, scuba. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought 
that would be possible in Western Kentucky. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Hopkins. Hopkins. Really? Um, I have several interesting, interesting things. Like I said, coffee shop, I have that one. Um, what is a craft distillery? A craft distillery is um, basic, and I'm not 100% sure. We just started on this one. But um, they are going to do like bourbon and that kind of distillery. That kind of <laughs>
startups and stuff. I don't. Don't think they're useful. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So maybe that's what we can provide as a group to you. A is to provide the, the information that people that are trying to start businesses or are having issues or questions. I know we had started on that um, to see what all different. I mean, because there's lots of different people that Kennergy's going to offer like discounts and things like that. And I, she was working on that list. Well, wonderful. So getting that together would be phenomenal for us probably as a resource list. Okay. You know, I know that we had a we had a meeting at the college, and one of the things we talked about there was having a business support hub that would be great to have a that kind of a program set up where if we needed a, an attorney or we needed you know access to different programs or processes or a group discount that's we're doing in all the small businesses as a hub, that that might be a, a very valuable service for us as business owners. It is, yes, I, I totally agree. I would love to be a part of that. Okay. Speaking of being a part of that, where, where is y'all's future? Where are you going? What would you like to do to help? Uh, you got any more of those seminars planned? Um, I am actually working with Stan Hill from Employment Services on uh, doing a PBO, which is basically just a group setting of what you need to do to get ready you know if you think you want to go in business well here's kind of the highlights it's a couple of hours and we're going to start doing those pretty frequently uh, at the employment office um, in the next couple of months do you find <clears throat> is there any sort of like conventional wisdom that you hear kind of in among your colleagues from around the rest of the country or that sort of thing that you really think do not fly here? You know, that there's some, is there, is there some kind of peculiarity about our market that like if you were working in another town altogether, you would go a different direction? I, I don't know, it's a shot in the dark. Um, I think it's, the, which we have a couple of people in here that have shown that it's not always that way. But in Madisonville, you always get the stigma if you're not from here. Oh, you're not from here. You know, <laughs> I'm here all the time. So, uh, and I don't know if it's just us, if it's a small town, because if people in Lexington, the majority of people not there. aren't yeah. from Lexington. Uh, right. You know, they move there, they go to school, and then they just stay or whatever. Um, but that's the biggest uh, thing I find that people, I mean, it's <coughs> to the area a lot of times, I think, because you don't know everybody. Okay. Did you find that? Well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the perception of that is because we are a small community. Mm -hmm. I know that when I moved in here, if you'll be proactive, the big problem is that most of the people that have that statement is the fact that they come into the community, they want to open up their business and stay inside their door, and I opened it, they shall come without trying to be proactive and get out and let people know that they're there. Okay. So their perception is that there's there's no assistance, there's no, no group support, and if you're not from here, you can't make sell here. You know, but. Oh, that's, yeah, that's not the case. I mean, no, I'm not. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not the case here. I mean, it really isn't, the, it's not the case. It's, it's a perception that's held mm -hmm. by just a few people based on that, I think. Yeah, well, and the thing is, especially like even in my job, I, like I said, I've been in business for over 10 years. I, I grew up in Nortonville. Uh, you know, this position has been here for years. I took it over last summer. There was a vacancy for a couple of months, um, but I didn't even know this person was there for anybody's assistance. Uh, so, I mean, I've had five or six different businesses and nobody's ever mentioned that person to me. Um, because it would have been helpful, maybe not the, the third or fourth time, but the first and second time when we had questions and we had no idea who to go to or whatever, it would have been very helpful to know that. <laughs> 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 